Adding pop-ups to your Elementor website is so simple and easy. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go through some settings, especially the display conditions. And then I'm also going to show you how you can use a button to activate or summon a pop-up to open. Now, what's the benefits of having a pop-up? Because I actually do hate them, especially when you go onto some websites and they just start springing up on you. It's bad enough that we have the cookie consent. But maybe you've got someone who's come to your website and you want to give them a special offer like a discount or a coupon or you want them to subscribe to your newsletter or maybe they're on your website and just as they're about to leave you want to go hey don't go just yet here's an extra 10 percent offer it could massively help you with conversions or building engagement so let's have a look at how to build a pop-up with Elementor. We're going to set up the pop-up to appear when you're on this example homepage. The first thing you need to do is go over to your WordPress dashboard and go over to templates. It's always a good idea to hit all so you can see all of your templates and you will see a setting over here called pop-up or a tab. Let's go and create a brand new one. We're going to click add new template, make sure it's selected on pop-up and give it a name. I've called it welcome pop-up and we're going to click create template. Now, Elemental does give you some pre-built templates that you could use, but I'm going to build one from scratch. You do have a pretty decent collection here, and I would recommend that you maybe explore some of these. I mean, look, this is pretty nice and that, and then you just modify the content. And that's if you want to do it really quick and easy. But I just want to show you how to build one from the get go. So we are going to hit the X and we are going to build one from scratch. Now, you will notice that on the screen you have like a shrunken down pane. Normally, when you're on a new page, you will have the full width of the screen, but it's already defaulting you to be a smaller subset of what you normally would see. Don't worry, because if you want to have your pop up be a full width and a full screen, you can do. What you want to do is first hit the plus sign and go and decide on what kind of container setup you want to go for. I'm just going to go for your standard column directional container. The first thing I'm going to do is start setting up how this will look. Now, you don't need to worry too much about the box or the full width here, because if you do pick full width, it doesn't actually go to full width. So if I go and set that to be full width and I now go for preview, it's still in the middle of the screen. To change how big that actually is, you have to go down here to where you have settings. And the settings now, when you click this, will be specific for the pop up. We're going to come back on to that later on. But now I just want to set up some of the parameters in terms of the padding. So I'm going to click back onto my container. Mine is set to be a column direction. You could go for row if you want, but we're going to leave it as column. I'm going to center everything in terms of the content and the alignment inside. I'm going to leave my gap as 20. Again, you might want to zero it out or change it to 50. And I'm not going to bother with the wrap. This is your standard Flexbox container, okay? It's kind of what you would have been doing when you're working on a page. But I will go to my advanced tab and I'm going to zero out the margin. And on the padding, I'm going to pop in 50. So when I do start adding in my content, there will be 50 inside of there. When you're doing the width, you want to do it in the settings. But for the height, you could, if you want, go over here, go to VH and type in 100. You can also set it in the settings as well. So there's two ways to set the height, but this is your very basic one. I'm actually just going to leave that zeroed out and I'm just going to let it fit the content. So that is our basic container. Now let's go and add in some content. So I'm going to drop into here a heading. We'll have some text. Let's change the contents. There's nothing fancy going on here. I'm going to go over to my container, go to the style, and I could give it a background color or a gradient. I could even pop in an image here, or I could actually drop an image into the container as well. So let's go and do that. And that's basically it for a very basic pop-up container. You could have dropped in a video, an accordion. You could even drop in a product, a loop grid if you so want, a buy now button, another form, PDFs. The choice is up to you. I'm just saying, hey, welcome, and here's a coupon code. So imagine you were selling products, or maybe if someone is going to contact you for some services, if they use that code, they get an extra 15% off. And this pop-up could appear straight away on the homepage, or maybe it appears after there's a bit of a delay, or maybe when you're exiting the website. But before I go and show you more of the settings and the display conditions, 
Let's go and add in a subscribe form as well, because maybe you want them to subscribe. Let's go and drop in a form and I'm going to get rid of the name and the message box. We'll get rid of the label. I'm going to click on the email and I'm going to change the placeholder. I've written add your email to join and we're going to set this up to be 60%. Then I'm going to go to my button and I'm going to change this to be 40%. And that will now go and sit on one line. It's still looking a little bit scrunched up, right? We'll go to the advanced tab. And remember, we're still on the form. It's only one field. And where we have the width, if you go for 100%, it goes all the way across. I'm going to change it to custom. And we're going to go for 75% like that. I have changed the wording to be subscribe. That's looking pretty good right now. How simple and easy was that to create? Now let's go and change the pop-up settings and explore the display conditions. To check or change the pop-up settings, and this is something you really should do, don't just create this and think, right, I've done my pop-up and walk away. You must check your settings. Go down to the bottom left where you have settings and click this. And this now brings up the pop-up settings. You gotta get used to this. You'll be using that cog to access the page settings. This is now specific for the pop-up. And here is where we now have the whip. Remember, the pop-up, when you add the container, if you had started messing around with the width of it, it doesn't really do much. But over here now, if I was to go to VW and change that to be 100, that pop-up went all the way across the screen. And you also notice it kind of expanded and grew because the height of this is set to fit to the content. Let me shrink it down to go for, say, 50%. At the moment, the fit to content will grow accordingly or you could have gone for fit to screen. So that's your height. So when we were in the container, I could have gone to height and set the height there, or you could also do it here. We do have the content position. So this is at the top. We can change it to be in the center, or we can go for the bottom. This is where you have gone for a fit to screen. Whereas if you just go for fit to content, it doesn't give you that option. Now the other setting we also have is custom. And this again allows you to decide on the specific height. So we could go for something like that. Let's explore the position settings. If I go and hit the horizontal, you can basically see what it's doing. So if you now want to have your pop up appear on the left hand side and from the top, you can do. Or maybe you want it to be on the right hand side at the bottom, which I know I'm covering my face with. But can you see what that does? So you could even go for center bottom. Really cool, easy settings. Let's just leave it in the center for now. Do you want to have an overlay? So when the pop-up appears, do you want there to be a shaded color behind? And it can be a full block color or an image, and we're going to get to that later on. So if I go and untick that or uncheck it or not show it or toggle it off even, when your pop-up now appears, this is how it will be. There is a bit of a shadow behind it, but Sometimes if your page is quite busy or you've got generally, you know, quite a bit of content, I would say the overlay makes the pop up stand out so much better. And if you care about accessibility, I definitely would do that. Do you want to have a close button? Notice it over there. We can toggle that on and off as well. Well, how would you close the pop up if you don't have a button? Well, you just click on the overlay and that will automatically close the pop up down. From an accessibility point of view, I would still put the X in because some people might not realize that and they might be scared to click anywhere else. What about the animation when the pop up is summoned? Do you want it to just appear or do you want it to fade in or maybe zoom in? And there's so many settings slide in, slide in right. I'm going to go in with slide in right. So what does that even mean? We'll just go and hit preview. And you'll see it appear and it slides in from the right. And then I'm going to say that when we hit the close button, it slides out right. So it will come in from the right and it will slide out from the right as well. But you could have it slide out in the opposite direction. It's entirely up to you. The standard duration of the animation is 1.2 seconds. I find that to be a bit slow. So I like to go with either 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.75. Play around with it, you know, you just hit the preview button and you'll see it in action. Now let's go over to the style. Let's go and add in a border radius and I do recommend you do this in the pop-up settings. Now at the moment, this is looking okay. If you ever notice like you can still see a hard line over there, even though the pop-up has got a border radius, you might need to go back into the container and give that a border radius of say 25 as well. Nine times out of 10, 
You just do it over here in the style and it will be absolutely fine. Let's now go over to the overlay. This is the color we currently see and we're going to go for purple. We now have a block color. Let's click on the color and let's now drop down the transparency of it. But you're not limited to just using colors. You could also pop in an image, which can have a great effect for some websites. Let's now have a look at the close button. We can go and change the size of it. We can change the color of it. We can even rearrange its exact positioning. So I could bring it uh, lower down or higher. When you do start to mess around with anything here, Always go and check how is this going to look on the mobile. Now let's go to the advanced tab. How many seconds do you want to pass before the close button actually appears? So maybe you want them to wait two or three seconds. I strongly recommend you don't set up a delay because there's nothing annoying than when someone goes to a page, a pop-up appears and they didn't want to see the pop-up and you've now delayed the close button. Well, that's not great for user experience. So, but I will leave that up to you. It very much depends on your business or what was the purpose of the pop-up. Maybe you want the pop-up to automatically close. Again, it depends on the situation you're doing that for. So you might say after 10 seconds, I want you to go. Maybe you've got a video in here and the video is auto and It's got sound and the video is, I don't know, 30 seconds long. So you might go and set that to close after 31 or 32 seconds. So when the video is played, it then closes down. That's not a bad idea. I've already told you that you can click on the overlay to close the pop-up. If you don't want that to happen, go and prevent it. Do you want them to close the pop-up by hitting the escape button? Do you want to avoid multiple pop-ups? So let's say you've got a pop-up and then four or five seconds later on, or when they scroll down the page, another pop-up appears. Do you really want to have two pop-ups overlaying? So I've got to go close and close. Or maybe when the second one appears, the first one automatically closes down. I do recommend going for that. Okay, I would say avoid multiple pop-ups. There's nothing worse than when I've got to go close, 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 right? There are dodgy websites out there that do this a lot. No one likes it. And if you do want to add in a class name or any custom CSS, you can do that as well. That was a run through of the pop up settings. Now let's go through the display conditions and I'm going to make this appear on the home page, maybe two seconds after you land. So let's go and hit publish. And by the way, if you have already published by hitting save and close, at any time you come back into your pop up, go and hit the arrow over here and then go to display conditions. You will see options for triggers and advanced rules. Don't worry, because once you're over here, you will see the options here as well. So just go to the first one or whichever one you want and you can jump around. So let's go and add in a condition. Where will we display this template? Let's say add condition. So I've set this to be for the home page. Now you could go and add in multiple pages about services and anything else. However, if you go and set the triggers and the advanced rules as well, they're going to click into gear for every page where you've gone and said display this. So if you want to have different rules for different pages, you can still use the template. You would just make a duplicate of it and go and set up different rules. Let's keep this really simple. We're going to be on the home page. Now we're going to go to the trigger. Do I want this to appear on page load? Why not? Do you want it to maybe appear on scroll? So if you weren't going to have it instantly appear on page load, it actually appears when you are 50% down the page. Let's just go back to the page load. Because this was instant. I'm going to say do it after two seconds. So the page will load. And two seconds later, I want that pop up to appear. Maybe I only want it to appear when you get to a certain element. So let's say my page has got like 20 containers. And when you get to container number 10, where I'm now telling you about a special product or a special course or service, that's when I want the pop up with a coupon code or subscribe now to appear. If I give my container or the form or the image a class name, let's call it services is the class name. You would pop that in here. And when the user scrolls down and they get to that point, it's in their viewport, the pop up would then activate. Maybe when they click on the page. So as someone is scrolling down, if they happen to click something, you know, you might have some animation or something going on. When they click, that's when the pop up appears. What about inactivity? So if someone is looking at something, maybe you've got like a video or an article and you're pretty confident that people are going to sit and read it. You might go, well, after 15 seconds, then give them the pop up. Because if they're still on my page after 15 seconds, 
and they've not gone elsewhere, they must have liked the content. Otherwise, why are they still here? And what about if you want it to appear when they try to exit? So they're now trying to close or go off to another page. Of course, if they do Command or Control W and they shut down their entire window, it's not going to really activate but maybe they're moving around your website and you don't mind that, but you just want to remind them, hey, don't forget, if you order now, it's free delivery. Let's go to the advanced rules. Do you want it to always appear on the home page? Because let's say I've come to your website brand new and a pop-up appears. And when I click on the about page and then I go back to the home page, the pop-up reappears. I go to your services page. I go back to your home page. The pop-up reappears. That can be really, really annoying. So you might go on there and say, once you've viewed the home page once, I don't want it to appear again. So it's going to remember your user, hopefully caching and all of that, and it won't show it. Maybe you only want it to show if they come from a specific URL. So let's say you go and start a campaign on say social media or on someone else's website. So you might say, look, if you click this link on my website or your colleague's website, you will then see a 10% coupon or a 50% coupon. But it's only for people that come from a specific location. Maybe you only want the pop-up to appear at certain times. So go and pick your start and your end date. Again, really cool features for your pop-up and it's all within the settings. So we're gonna keep this simple. Show once, triggers two seconds after you land on the home page, and it's gonna be basically on the home page. Now I'm going to hit save and close. When I click on the home page, the pop up should appear after two seconds. We're going to click on the home page. And there we go. It's now appeared. And obviously, you got the close button over there. But what if I don't want the pop up to appear like that with display conditions? And instead, I want it to open when I click a button. Again, really easy to do. Let's go back over to our pop-up, go to display conditions, go to trigger, and I'm now gonna get rid of the original trigger where it loaded on the page. I don't need that. I'm then gonna hit save and close. I've now gone to my home page and I'm now editing with Elemental. We have a button over here which currently goes to the services page. I'm gonna duplicate that button just so we have two. Now at the moment, this is still going to the services page. You can see that there, let's just extend that. I'm going to get rid of that link completely. This is how easy it is. Over here, we have the dynamic tag. Go and click that and scroll down until you see pop up. We are going to activate an action. We're going to click the spanner or the wrench and we're going to set the action to be open pop up. If you have got another pop up open, you could add a button into a pop up, which is close pop up. So I've already shown you previously how you'll have a close icon that you can use with for your pop up. But maybe when you've got the pop up, you want to have a button inside that says the word close pop up, close window or whatever. So you could actually put a button into here that now closes the pop up as well. We're going to leave it as open and then we are going to select our pop up. It is called welcome. So I'm just going to type a bit of the name and there we go. Welcome pop up, which is a template. Let's go and click that. When I go back to the home page, and originally we had a pop up that appeared after two seconds, well, nothing is now appearing. But if I now click open pop up, the pop up appears, and I can click on the close sign to get rid of it, or I can open the pop up and click anywhere in the overlay, and it will disappear as well. Another really simple way of opening pop ups.